This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I wanted to talk about bankers blaming Bitcoin. We all know that Bitcoin is freedom money and this is why bankers hate Bitcoin so much. So for example, the king of bank bailouts, Warren Buffett hates Bitcoin. He's compared it to rat poison, but we know why he doesn't like it because Bitcoin is probably bad for the banks. And Buffett was a huge beneficiary of the bank bailouts back in 2009. He also did a little insider trading in his personal account where he sold some Wells Fargo shares that he owned in his personal account while after having gone on TV and pumped Wells Fargo. So the man is ethically challenged as well. Bitcoin is indeed rat poison to the too big to fail banks. This is another reason that Jamie Dimon doesn't like Bitcoin. Jeffrey Epstein's banker, Jamie Dimon, who looks like this, always goes to Davos every year and says the exact same thing about Bitcoin, calling it a pet rock. Meanwhile, he's been uh, the banker for so many unsavory characters. ECB bankers in Europe really, really hate Bitcoin as well. Here is an article in which they tried to trash Bitcoin and ended up really just calling the exact bottom in Bitcoin's price. So it turns out it really wasn't Bitcoin's last stand, but it may be the ECB's and the, e in the EU's last stand. So why is the EU so, so concerned about Bitcoin's energy usage. Here's one reason. Europe's energy plan for the past 20 years has been remarkably stupid. This was their plan. You set up lots of wind turbines and solar panels in a part of the world that's not especially windy or sunny. You shut down the nuclear power plants in many of the countries, rely on a political enemy for oil and natural gas. And then when that source gets cut off, have LNG shipped halfway across the world from the U.S., never talking about what the carbon footprint of that is, then reopen the coal plants that have been closed for 20 years, and then everyone burns lots of wood in their home fireplaces due to natural gas shortages. So this is a complete disaster, and they're obviously needing someone to blame. Everyone flies their private jets to Davos to clutch their pearls about this, and then they look for a scapegoat. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, and share this video with a friend or family member that you think may enjoy it. So if you're a banker or a politician looking for a scapegoat for your own bad economic and energy policy decisions, try Bitcoin. I believe this cartoon dates from Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street, and you have everyone outside the bank saying no more bailouts, stop corporate greed, and then you have the fat banker tell them Bitcoin is bad for the environment. This is exactly what is happening in Europe. I, I retweeted this post a couple days ago from Daniel Batten. While we were sleeping, the European Commission via the ESMA and the ECB, the European Central Bank, has been creating a report which they plan to label Bitcoin as environmentally harmful, a threat to EU energy security, as if the EU's own decisions weren't a threat to EU energy security, and a haven for financial criminals. And of course, the ECB is run by a criminal herself. Christine Lagarde. There are some concerns that this may lead to a ban on Bitcoin mining or even a, a complete ban on Bitcoin in Europe in the coming years. Meanwhile, in the U.S., things are looking a bit more hopeful. Bitcoin has invaded BlackRock's headquarters with the rolling out of the new ETF. And what happened is BlackRock didn't change Bitcoin, but Bitcoin changed BlackRock. And as a result, you see BlackRock stepping away from ESG and you see companies like KPMG putting out articles about how Bitcoin is actually quite good for the environment. Now, there's still rumblings. The current administration is quite hostile to Bitcoin. This uh, recent article, U.S. Department of Energy announced an emergency data collection initiative targeting U.S. Bitcoin miners. So this is clearly a form of harassment, but they're going to have a lot of trouble standing up to BlackRock. The fact remains, and it's important to remember this context when you hear Bitcoin attacked, especially by bankers and politicians, the greatest source of pollution and environmental damage in the world is probably and has been probably the U.S. military. So if you want to criticize Bitcoin's energy usage or impact, which is actually quite minimal, don't forget that the U.S. dollar is backed by proof of war. We've been over this many times on this channel, but if you're new to the channel, just ask Saddam Hussein or Gaddafi what happens to you when you sell your oil for euros instead of U.S. dollars. What's the carbon footprint of six trillion, seven trillion in foreign U.S. wars? How much energy does the U.S. military consume and what does it actually accomplish? How much energy is used by all those bank branches and skyscrapers and financial districts around the world? How much energy is consumed by bankers flying around the world for various central bank meetings, going to Davos, etc.? And also, more importantly, how much human suffering has fiat money caused? When the banks blew up the U.S. economy in 2008, bankers got bonuses while people had their homes foreclosed on. 
what's the environmental impact of the inflation caused by central bankers. For example, my grandfather used the same nice wooden desk that his grandfather used, and my grandfather was not especially wealthy. Today, thanks to our central bankers, our landfill is full of IKEA furniture and other high time preference disposable items because of the inflation. People can't make things out of nice materials anymore. So make no mistake about it. These bankers, these politicians care nothing about the environment and they have zero ethics. It's private jets for me, bicycles for you. And the ECB is still run by a criminal, an indicted criminal who for some reason never went to jail after accepting bribes. Alex Gladstein in this tweet has a recent example of the human suffering caused by fiat, massive currency devaluation in Nigeria and Egypt. In neither case did the government ask the people for permission to dramatically reduce their wages, purchasing power, or living standards. Now hundreds of millions will suffer. Currency devaluation is a crime against humanity. And here's a linked tweet that talks about the devaluation of the uh, Naira and the Egyptian currency as well. The ironic thing and the ironic thing about these banker attacks is that Bitcoin is actually quite good for the environment. It's quite good for Africa. This is another article by Alex Gladstein, which is very interesting. I may cover it in more depth in a future video, how Bitcoin mining basically is saving wasted energy and expanding financial freedom in Africa. I'll link to this in the description notes below. It's really a very amazing article. Also link to my playlist on why Bitcoin mining is actually good for the environment. When you have the bankers accusing Bitcoin of something, it really behooves you to take a closer look because these people are not trustworthy. But they've decided that ESG is a, a fairly good attack vector for Bitcoin. Also, if you want to learn more about the fight against the EU and defending Bitcoin proof of work, you can, I'll link to this, uh, this podcast by Stefan Levera in which he interviews these two Europeans who are currently fighting for Bitcoin in Europe. I haven't listened to this yet, but it does look quite interesting if you're interested in the European regulatory uh, backdrop. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.